Hello TCG and Lorcana enthusiasts and welcome back to yet another Lorcana gameplay video. We're here at Pixelborn going to be doing a two best out of three with the Amethyst Ruby control deck that we profiled just this week. Check the link down in the description below for that video. But without further ado, let's jump into the games. All right, folks, so here we are for game number one. We are going first here. That's a pretty good looking going first hand here. Um, we don't need the Lady Tremaine. We don't need, and be prepared, another hand, Madam Snake, and we definitely don't need a Maleficence. We can keep Mini, Madam Him Snake, and Madam Him Fox. Okay, that's good. That's good. Gives us a really good starting hand there. Let's go. I think we're going to go put Maui away just because we don't need Maui right now. We're going to put on Minnie Mouse and we will pass to see what our opponent is playing here. Alright, well, there's a possibility of us playing a mirror match. Alright, we're, we're strongly playing a mirror match. <laughs> okay, so we're playing the mirror. Um, let's put that away. I think what I'll do is I will quest here, bring out the snake to bounce the mini, and pass. Just so we have our one drop, in case we do need it. So he's going to quest with Olaf here. Oh well, I guess we'll play the exact same strategy that I just played. Um, the Seeds might go into the Inkwell. We don't need her right this moment in time. We'll just play out a Maleficent and draw a singular card. We could sing to burn two damage. Let's see. I think we'll just quest and pass. I mean, if he comes at them, Adam, him, Snake, with his Snake, I don't care. That, that's a trade-off. It means he's not questing for the turn. Now, if he brings out Madam Him Fox, it doesn't matter either way. Yeah, Quest for One knocks out the snake, but that knocks out Madam Him Fox. Madam Him Fox is, again, like we said, it's a 4 3. Alright, so he's going to throw away a card I really don't ever really want to throw in my inkwell unless I'm desperate. Okay, I don't know if we're like playing the pseudo same strategy pathway. Here, yeah, we changed off. I played Mini first, he played Olaf first, and then now we've done Madam Him Snakes, and now we've done Maleficence. And here's the problem, like, he threw in one of the cards I don't want to throw in to combo off of this Maleficent. I mean, it's a possibility you may or may not see it. Well, hey, look at that. The card drew itself to us. <laughs> Top deck, baby. Um, from here, I think we'll throw the mini away. I don't think she's going to be impactful right now. We could bounce with the Madam Him. I think I'm just going to bring out the hair and draw an extra card and pass. Because this puts me at advantage. Four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so he will have one less card possibly this turn. Depending on what he plays here as he goes on. For his plays, of course. Alright, the evasive mini. Kinda didn't want to see that. I don't right now have a way to deal with an evasive mini mouse. I mean, that's pretty good at this moment in time. Let's see, what do we want to do? We still have our teeth, but I need a way to damage this mini. Don't have that as of right now. Um, let's put this crab Merlin away for right now. We got to keep advantage on him. We're one step closer to, of course, doing stuff. And we do have this ability as well. Um, I'm going to quest. I don't have the ability to knock. Oh, I do. I do have the ability to knock something else out. Okay, let's do this. Knock out this Maleficent. This leaves me with a damage. Pinocchio onto the 
bored to not put this all off down. We'll bring out Madam Him Fox, bounce back Merlin the Rabbit, Merlin the Rabbit to draw Madam Him Fox to knock out Olaf. Yes, that does leave him on this mini mouse, which I still don't have a way right now to really deal with because I don't have an evasive target in my deck. And the only way I do gain evasion right now is through, of course, my mini mouse surfer and the Peter Pan's um, shadow. Okay, so he's going to start buffing up some lore here. You got to be careful because I do have teeth inhibition. Because I can sing it off the Pinocchio for furry, kill Pinocchio, and then knock out Minnie Mouse if he decides to swing in Minnie Mouse here. I doubt it. This is a 1-3 body. So it, it ain't doing much. The one problem is now I play Lady Tremaine, and Lady Tremaine's just going to knock out. He's just going to go for the goat clay. That's what he's going to do. I mean, I kind of have to do it. I don't get a choice in the matter. I do have two teeth in ambition now. Oh, I actually have to throw one of my teeth in the bishop into my inkwell here. Yeah, I'm gonna have to throw one away because I don't have a feasible target. Unfortunately, I'm he's gonna pick the goat. There's like no reason he wouldn't pick the goat here. Yeah. Get some of the extra lore, but at least he can't quest with it for a turn and gain like a possibility of like three heavy lore off of it. And next turn, I threaten board wipe. I mean, am I going to use it? I'm not sure. I doubt it, in all honesty. But the reason I wanted to get rid even though, yeah, the goat gives him one more and now we're tied, I'm up on the lore count right here. I'm getting five a lore turn. He's only getting two. I beat him by lore. You know, unless he keeps spawning goats. Hey, look, our goat has arrived. Uh, I'm gonna have to get rid of the other teeth in the mission. I don't want to throw this Merlin goat away like that. I could knock out his Merlin goat, play this, knock it out. But the problem is right now, I'm like threatening him to... Well, no, I'm actually up on the lore count right now. Uh, if he bounces here, that'd be really good for him. Because he quests for three, then one more to four. No, let's just do this for 12. I threaten a lot of things with a goat right now. And like I said, I can go in turn, nuke board, nuke off his entire board in one shot. Well, there's the win more card. I kind of hate to see, but... Because this now buffs him up to... Well, he can't... No, he could bounce with the snake, Merlin. The snake madam him right now. Okay, knock that out. That gives him one more. He'll be up to 13. So now I have to be mindful that he's questing for three a turn. Well, that's actually really good for me. Um, I don't have the Madam Him Fox here to do much else. But this will be detrimental to him because it knocks out his one and only card. He on the board. Now, be mindful that it is detrimental to me as well because the fact is that, um, because uh, next turn he just go, um, be prepared, but he won't be able to use this book if he decides to go be prepared. But that also gives me an extra lore because the goat trigger. All right, so he's just gonna go Maui. Yeah, he's gonna go the the book here in essence of what Maui would be. Maui probably would be like maybe two lore a turn if he wasn't reckless and rush. All right, game one goes to us in the mirror. All right, on to uh, game two. You know, I'm half expecting to see a bunch of mirrors in the ladder here for Pixelborn just because this is one of the best decks of the format right now. All right, so what do we got? We got some pretty good cards here. Um, I think the only card I want to take out is the Yzma, because it's the only high vow card we really can't use. So yeah, we'll just confirm that and get another Teeth Inhibition. All right. Um, I guess we'll throw a Teeth Inhibition away, just because I kind of want to keep this Merlin Goat in my hand for right now. We'll pass on a mini mouse. Now the question, big question is what deck is our opponent? Okay, 
you know, sometimes you gotta see double mirror matches. I mean, like I said, this is the best deck of the formats. I think we will just... Yeah, I don't have the ability right now to, like, utilize this bounce mechanic. So I'm just gonna pass here. Because he can't rush me, because Mana Him Snake doesn't have rush. Okay, so he passed on that. I'm gonna have to put this other te Tooth Inhibition away. I'm going to, once again, quest with the mini, and I'm gonna have to hard cast this to draw two. And then pass. Alright, so we've lost two Teeth and Ambition. We'll be able to throw a mini into our Inkwell, and then bring out, probably, I want to say, the Merlin hair just so we can start drawing cards and start getting a little more advantage here okay so he's got now a mini mouse so he's now he's got two one drops it's pretty nice um yeah we'll do this let's bring out a hair draw an extra card that's pretty nice as well we will pass on that now, mindful the hair can't punch anything on this board right now. I mean, I could deal damage, and the mini can deal damage. Mind you on that. I always hate when people still do this. People, this is a free pot of greed for you. I get it. Yeah, if it's the only card you have to throw, you can only throw in your inkwell, then I, it makes complete sense to do it. Okay. That's pretty nice as well. Um. Well, that actually is pretty nice. I think I'm going to throw Maleficent in my Inkwell. I hate to do it because I really want the draw advantage. I think I'm going to... Let's do a damage there and a damage there. Just knock out this mini. Yeah, he's got advantage right now, but only slightly. He's only got an advantage right now, so it's not overly advantaged just yet and next turn it go lay tremaine and knock something out on his board like go maui over maui over say the goat here because he's not gonna be able to bounce it yeah it gives him extra lore but i mean overall it's not horrible oh no i guess he could bounce here with the snake yeah he can go madam him snake bounce <laughs> yeah there it is man how am i that intelligent to realize that all right, well, that does give him an extra lore here. He is now outspeeding me in lore count. Um, I think I'm going to do this. I'm going to bring out my Merlin Goat. I'm going to quest and quest. And then I think I'm going to bounce back my hair. And give me another draw. Okay, that's actually pretty nice. Because what I could do is, depending on what he does, I can go Madam Him Fox to bounce back my Madam, my Goat Merlin. And then of course I have Lady Tremaine in the future state for use. So he doesn't have befriends on the other side. That's sad. I mean, yeah, I birth one and one Maleficent in my inkwell as well. So, I mean, I don't have much else on my side. So, he threw the Marlin Goat into the inkwell. I mean, he's trying to keep up with an inking count. Um, heck, if you want to give me a free lore there, sir, I will take free lore for days. I don't mind free lore. That is for sure. Another mini. We'll do two there. Knocking that. We'll take three damage there, going to four. Um, I think I'm going to throw a mana. Uh, I'm going to throw another mini mouse. And then I'm going to go Lady Tremaine. And then that banishes Lady Tremaine. In essence, that resets us completely. In essence, there's nothing on his board, so. If he has, say, like, be prepared in his hand, at this moment in time, it's not going to be impactful. And that's what I kind of want 
not to be. So it's impactful against me, but not really. I mean, yeah, I cleaned up his board, so there's no fear for him to do it. But again, I'm not minding if he doesn't do it. So you went the hair there. Um, I was a little afraid he nuked the board, but I mean, there's nothing much you can do about it. He could bounce here to get another draw. Or he's going to draw two. I mean, a draw two off of that card is not bad either. All right, well, I don't want to play Pinocchio here because I do not want to be able to give him that ability. I'm just going to bring out a goat and I'm going to quest and quest. I want to wait one turn before I bring out Madam Him Fox so I can go. Um... Now, yes, I did miss my drop, which kind of sucks. But what I want to do is I want to be able to quest with the goat so I can get the three possible lore off this goat. So there's the be prepared. I was afraid sooner or later he'd summon it. But I mean, this just basically gives him an extra draw and gives me a lore. So now I'm up still on the lore count here. Yeah, he's up on card advantage, but he can't play anything for the turn. Unless he, of course, inks something and then has a one drop in his hand. Then yes, he'll have advantage there. No. I don't want to throw this Maui into my inkwell at all. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to put this out. Let's draw. And then I'm going to throw out this Maleficent and draw. Okay, that's pretty nice. Let's throw a Madam Him Fox into our inkwell. We have another one sitting in our hand and pass. This is really good. Good hand right here. Which also allows us, because it allows us to go Pinocchio to hit something. And he's going to go double book. All right, now we have to be cautious. He's on a win more path, a very much win more path, depending on what his next cards are. Okay, so I guess we'll put out another hair, draw another card, that's good. Now I gotta be careful. He still has the ability to um, hit me with a, um, with a be prepared and all right. Yeah, we're going to throw a Maui away. Yeah, it's a little strange of a play. All right, so he has currently two lore on the board. I'm currently three. I'm winning by lore count. He can nuke board. This is probably a Maleficent play if I had to take a guess. No, it's another be prepared play. Okay. Now, be mindful. Can I just swap any? Okay, so no, I have to choose a character to swap into a deck. Now, this is good. I think I forgot my deck profile. You can actually use this to um, flip back your goat, your rabbits, all your major guys that you need to kind of flip back in your deck to play. So we'll bring that out. Bring out the rabbits. Draw another card. Um, this puts me to 13. I could play this Yzma to draw another two cards and draw a third card off of that. He's purged two be prepared. He still has two more left in the deck. He's questing for two a turn. I have to start being a little more aggressive here. If he wants to play another be prepared, he can be my guest. I just have to start being aggressive for the fact that he's getting two more a turn. Ooh, that's the one I wanted to see, because that puts him up to 16. And if I play down Maleficent and not... Uh, ooh, wow, he's actually going to be hyper aggressive here. That's the problem with these freaking books. Like I said, they are just so much win more. Okay, so, in essence, next turn, he has three lore. He goes goat, he goes goat, two books. I don't have it. I do not have it in this board state. I unfortunately cannot win in this board state. If he hadn't had the goat, we'd be fine. Because I could go Maleficent, nuke that, and then there'd be no way for him to win. But unfortunately, thanks to the GOAT, he does get the win. So, uh, mirror match number two goes to our opponent. On to game three. All right, folks, so here we are. So what is the possibility, you think, folks, that we're going to see a third mirror match? I mean, it's a good, this is a good show off of how this deck um, is configured. It's a pretty good hand. We're just going to throw out one Maleficent. Um, yeah, I think we're just going to throw out one Maleficent. Okay, Lady Tremaine is... Not bad, but not great. Um, it's not perfect of a board. Perfect of a thing right now, but hey. 
Who knows? Uh, let's throw Crab Merlin away. Yeah, we only have one more left in the deck, but the rest of my hand was is pretty good, right? Is really good right now. I mean, we have a Maleficent. Maleficent, we have a way to bounce it back to our hand if need be. Another card you could put in this deck I didn't mention in the deck profile is Befuddle. I did see some decks are playing Befuddle. Uh, the one one cost bounce a two two or less cost guy back to your opponent's hand. So you can bounce like your Madam Him Snakes if you wanted to, because it's it bounces anything on the board. It does just bounce your opponent's stuff. All right, so we're playing something Ruby related. Ah, we're playing Ruby Ember. Emerald. So he's playing aggro right now. He's playing aggro emerald. At this moment in time, I don't really fear a one drop uh, Flynn Rider. Now, he can be playing hand control cards in this deck as well. I mean, if you're playing emerald right now, you might as well play some of the good hand control cards of uh, Daisy Duck, um, the Donald Duck to draw you extra cards. I mean, you could play the the squirt the squirrel very interesting choice on this mini i mean yeah she's a three two so it's, she's not bad in my opinion okay well kind of so we're gonna have to do this um quest and then what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna use my him fox to bounce back the mini and then i'm gonna knock out the split rider mainly because i don't want him getting a two to go for two over his Flim Rider and then immediately giving himself evasive. Because he can do it. And it, yeah, it's annoying. Because uh, of the new Flynn Rider, the one that can almost quits for four but loses one lore for every card in your opponent's hand. Again, that's why if you're going to play, you got to play a little bit of hand control cards just so you could wheel your opponent's hand down just a little bit more. If you're not playing hand control in here, then it's kind of hurts. So he's playing evasive guys in here too, but again, he could be playing a pseudo just aggressive Emerald Ruby deck. Emerald has very annoying cards. I wouldn't call him aggressive. Or he's playing just a pure evasive deck. That does give all his evasive guys a plus one power. So that's not bad in any capacity. All right, I'm going to play out this rabbit. I'm going to quest with this... Fox. Now again, next turn we can even quest with the rabbit, spin it back with Madam Him Fox, and then get another draw there and have once again another rabbit to go for our draw. So all just another thing before we even like play anything with our inkwell. That's what's really nice about Lokana. It's not like you have to go like specifically like Dragon Ball Super is where you have to specifically have a phase where you put something in your power area. In Lokana, it's like, well, I could play where I can play something in my inkwell anytime I feel like it, which I think is just very, very good. Nothing against Dragon Ball requiring you to have a specific phase when you can put something in your power. But that was one thing is like in Dragon Ball, you had to always remember if you missed your power phase, you were pretty much screwed for putting power for that turn. So yeah, I think he's playing evasive, aggro evasive. He is playing evasive. Oh, I mean, that does knock each other out. All right, so I do have my out to this being, um, I mean, I do have an out to this in the fact of the matter. I do have Peter Pan's shadow, but I'm only playing one Peter Pan shadow. Um, let's just draw two fresh cards. Okay, so some fresh cards. Let's put a mini mouse into the equal again. Um, let's go Madam Him Fox. Bounce back Merlin Rabbit. Merlin Rabbit, draw another card. That's really good. And we will play an Olaf and pass the turn. Now, mind you, he does have the ability to quest for two here. Now, I do have an evasive body on Minnie Mouse. I'll probably be bringing it out here. And we are getting close to the kill spell range. So he has to be cautious of not playing too many evasive guys as I get closer and closer to kill range. Ray now, of course, getting himself three lower per turn, so it's going to get a lot quicker and a lot faster here for um, <coughs> everything. I'm going to throw the Maleficent away. I'm going to quest, and I'm going to quest. And I'm going to play Lady Tremaine, because it will force him to choose a two or a three. Now, he's, he's going to get rid of the Pongo. There's no reason he would not get rid of Pongo. He's gonna go get rid of Pongo. Yep, 
and he's going to keep Ray, because Ray gives him three lore per turn. Mind you, the next turn I can also kill spell the entirety of the board, so resetting everything on this board presence. Cool to see someone playing Peter Pan's dagger. I have been thinking about playing like a pure aggro, uh, pure evasive deck and just like using Peter Pan's dagger to buff all my guys up. All right. So we're just gonna quest with everyone. We're gonna throw that into our inkwell and I'm simply going to nuke the board. I don't want this uh, Kuzco. That gives him six lore a turn. That is, that's far too much lore. Far too much lore. So second dagger. He's really buffing out all his evasive guys to be attackers. That is for sure. Um. Hmm, this is tough. Uh, let's just see what the Maleficent gives us per draw. Madam Him Fox. So let's put Madam Him Snake away. I'm gonna put out this mini mouse and pass. Because this now gives us our, our one of our vases, but unfortunately, Peter Pan Dagger don't work for us. So this Lady Tremaine. So yeah, uh, she rips a lore from me. Not impossible to deal with in any aspect. Um, I hate not to play a lore per turn, but I mean, stripping him down another card is not horrible. Um, and there's nothing really much to do. I really don't want to throw this fox away, so I'll just pass. I mean, I'm up by lore advantage, as you can see. It's five to eight. I'm pretty much only missing one card to play my last big guy being Maleficent. But until I see a Maleficent, what do I really care? Um, yeah, you know what? My late Tremaine did what exactly she's supposed to do. Nuke off his board. Yeah, I was right. He was going to shift. <laughs> but I'd rather him play the hard cast. Play a hard cost there. Okay. Let's go hair to draw. That's hilarious. Quest and quest. Um you know what? We'll put on another hair and draw. Okay. More hairs. Merlin Rabbit draws as Merlin Rabbit, draws as Merlin Rabbit. We just we just like drawing Merlin Rabbits. I think we have the advantage here, because right now we have an evasive target. He needs to get a guy that has evasive on his board before he can, in a way, to deal with this mini. Yeah, that deals with it right there. Okay, so we did get the Maleficent. I don't think we're going to be playing it just this turn yet. So we're going to knock out his Lady Tremaine um, to allow us to draw one. Then we quest and quest. Then we can go Madam Him Fox, bounce the Merlin Rabbit. In essence, we're constantly just gaining so much hand advantage right here. Um, we could put this Maleficent away, and then we could go Lady Tremaine, and this is the end of the game. I knock out that. There's nothing you can do. I win by next turn. Yep, that is victory for us. Hooray, hooray, hooray. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed those games of Lorcana with Amethyst Ruby Control. Let me know your thoughts all down in the comments. And while you're commenting, do make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell so you can notify when my videos go live. And we'll see you here next time on Mama Dragons TCG.